My name is Ziad Hijazi. I am an interventional cardiologist dealing with congenital and structural heart disease. I've been in practice for over 20 some years and I practice at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. What really attracted me to transcatheter valve therapy is the vision I've seen a few years ago where we are heading with interventional cardiology. Many, many invasive techniques where you can put a valve without cracking the chest. During my career uh, from 1990, when I finished my training until now, on average, I do personally about 200 cardiac catheterizations a year. This is only in my own institution. In addition to that, of course, all the cases I do traveling to the Middle East, to China, to South America, and all over the world. So, thousands of cases. The major advantages of a transcatheter valve therapy is really intuitive. You don't have to crack the chest open. You go from the groin most of the time. Some of my colleagues using other valves, they may go from the neck or just underneath the clavicle and the patient's recovery is phenomenal. But nowadays, the differences are becoming less and less between an interventional cardiologist and a cardiac surgeon because many of the surgeons nowadays are learning the interventional techniques because most of the procedures now we are doing are minimally invasive. And the newer techniques, what we call the hybrid, is collaboration between the interventional cardiologist and the cardiac surgeons. The approval process in the United States is different than any other country in the world. They need to prove safety of the product and efficacy of the product. Proving something to be safe and effective may take years. In contrast, outside the United States, particularly Europe, they only require safety which is short, you can do a study in about one or two months, prove that it is safe, it does not kill the patient, and you get it approved. And that's why it takes longer in the United States for us to see the products that our colleagues across the pond already are using. It is very frustrating for me as a clinician knowing that there is technology out there that I cannot provide my patients this technology. And I've actually had a number of patients travel with me abroad because the, the devices that I wanted to use in the US were not available. I'm gonna give you an example of a patient that I had here in Chicago. She was 91 years of age. She needed an aortic valve. And for her to have the valve in the US, she had to enroll in a trial. And the trial, of course, is 50-50. The FDA wants us to compare the new therapy, the new valve, against the standard therapy, which is open heart surgery. So the computer assigns you 50, you have 50% chance of being assigned to the new therapy or 50% chance assigned to the conventional therapy. It, it's a good odds, but for a patient, if you are selected to the conventional therapy, you got 0%. So I called my colleague, in Canada where the valve is being provided for every patient. She flew there, she had hair procedure, and she came back to Chicago for follow-up. And this is one example. We've sent patients to Europe for the same thing because they did not want to enroll in the trial and have only a 50% chance of being selected for the new therapy. I, I believe that the best thing that can happen to accelerate the approval process for novel technology is maybe for the FDA to lower the criteria or lower the standards. What are they looking for? For example, we know that the transcatheter valves, they work. So instead of come and do a brand new trial all over and compare it to conventional, let's do registries. A registry will take let's say 100 or 200 or 500 patients and offer them directly this therapy and follow them for a certain time and report on the results. So you don't have to go through the randomization process where you still commit 
patients to conventional therapy. For example, now the only commercially available valve requires a large catheter, and many patients die from vascular complications. In my opinion, in this day and age, there is no need for a patient to die from a vascular complication because there are valves available outside the U.S. They require half the size of the catheter in the U.S. So why subject my patients to this, knowing that these valves already have been approved outside the U.S. with excellent results?